have no questions, and I yield to Dr. Burgess. I thank the chairman, and I want to thank our witnesses for, for being here today. I, I do feel obligated to say something about <clears throat> people keep bringing up cuts to Medicare. I would just remind people that over the last two years, the cuts to Medicare have come from the Biden administration and the previous Congress. In the American Rescue Plan, in the Inflation Reduction Act, significant cuts to Medicare and Medicare providers, all of which were used to offset generous increases in subsidies, which means payments to insurance companies. So let's not confuse that issue with what we have in front of us today. So, <clears throat> Mr. McHenry, let me just ask you, if I could, um, is, there a, is there an inherent danger in not educating future Americans about the inherent dangers of socialism? Well, I think we, we, have, uh, we have an important task as leaders uh, about our system, to explain our system of government. Checks and balances between the three branches of government, uh, our free speech rights, our property rights, uh, and then the system that that freedom, the economic system that came from those established legal uh, rights. And how over time we've tried to get, we try to make it better to actually try to achieve the ideals the founders laid out for us, and it's taken us generations to get as close as we have today, and we're still working. But what sprang out of property rights and speech rights, that level of freedom, was the free exchange of goods and services, which is commonly called capitalism, um, what we should, which we think of as a free economy the ability for in, an individual to make economic decisions for themselves uh, without asking for permission from the government or being fully beholden to the government. Um, I think it's incumbent upon us to explain the system, uh, to endorse the things that have worked, and to stand against the things that have failed internationally. I commonly, like all of you, go to schools, and you ask, um, are there, can you name the communist countries in the world? And I've had multiple people, multiple classes, where somebody, their first answer is, well, it's a trick question. It's not a trick question. We still have communist countries in the globe. Uh, Cuba to our south, North Korea uh, is two great examples. China is trying to complicate the model and make it a little more interesting, but fundamentally, it's governmental control. This resolution doesn't get into as fulsome details as we can and should, uh, but it speaks against the excesses of socialism globally uh, without having to have something salacious in here about our domestic politics. Um, so Congresswoman Salazar, um, uh, she can tell her story better than I can, uh, but her escape was to freedom and uh, to this American system. And she has a, a very different view uh, than I do as a native born American and has a wholehearted endorsement of what many of us assume is, is, you know, is prevalent as the air and, and water uh, of, of our economic system. And so uh, this resolution really condemns the excesses of socialism and the pain it's caused and the loss of life it's caused internationally. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'll be interested in time. I'll yield back. Thank you very much. I yield to the distinguished ranking member. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Uh, again, I, 